Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about how to make your ex really regret losing you. Okay, so if you've had a breakup recently and you are wondering how you can make your ex regret their decision, perhaps because you want them back or perhaps it's just because um, you feel like you've been wronged and you would like it if perhaps they would actually feel bad about the breakup because perhaps it really hurt you or something like that. So perhaps you've got maybe got a little bit of revenge on your mind. Obviously, it's not a good place to live from a place of revenge. But if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. And your feelings are valid. And, um, you know, sometimes going through a breakup does erode, you know, does kind of erupt some of those emotions. So, um, you know, if, it, if you feel like you're on a revenge trip right now, then fine but as long as you're not actually really directing it at them or being you know overly overbearing or intimidating to them but you're just kind of feeling it within yourself you know that's fine because you can't help how you feel right you can't, really can't a lot of the time okay but with time those feelings of revenge or whatever it may be will ease off you know because when you go for a breakup it is a really turbulent time and all kinds of emotions stir up inside of you and, and burst out basically um, so it is a really tough time. So I'm not here to judge anyone who is feeling certain ways if they've got anger or revenge in their heart because it's a really hurtful experience. It really is. And But what I can say, though, is with time, those feelings will ease off. They'll be less intense, okay? So anyway, how can you get your ex to regret losing you? Now, just as a bit of a disclaimer here, you're going to get exes that no matter what you do, are probably never going to regret the breakup. They may, like, second guess, like, their decision, but you may never really know about it. They may just be like, oh, yeah, I kind of... Maybe I made the wrong decision there. But you, they're never going to reach out and actually say that to you, right? But there are some exes that may actually really do genuinely regret losing you, and they may actually reach out to you in the future. But by then, right, by then, by the time that happens, perhaps you won't care anymore, and you would have, you know, you've through these tips basically got to a place where you won't care if your ex ever reaches out to you and perhaps you'll just smile and brush it off um because it no longer matters to you right now hopefully that's the place that you want to get to <clears throat> hopefully that's the place that you will get to as well the place where you don't actually no longer care if your ex regrets to break up or not but here are a few things that can help with making your ex regret the breakup so the first thing is that you have to apply the no contact rule you can't make someone miss you and regret losing you if you are still in their DMs, if you're still contacting them, right? If you're still in their life in some capacity that way and they know, specifically they know that you want them back or you feel bitter towards the relationship or you've still got a lot of angst, you know, you've still got a lot of basically feeling towards them, right? Because what you want to come off as, you want to come off as indifferent, right? You, if you want your ex to regret losing you, you have to come off as if though the breakup no longer bothers you, they no longer bother you, and that doesn't mean that you're cold or angry towards them, because let's say you can't help but see each other because you go to work together, or you've got kids together, so it doesn't mean that you're cold or angry or distant to them, because that still reveals that you have some feeling towards them, right, if you show any kind of emotion like that, it shows that you care, right, if you're angry, or if you're cold, and you, you know, you're just being mean to them, or whatever, that shows that you're still butthurt, basically, over the situation, and obviously the opposite as well, whereas you care too much and you're trying to get back together with them, that obviously still shows very strongly that you still care about the breakup. So you want to get to a place where you are unbothered. It's almost like whatever they do, you don't care. So you kind of want to Im imagine yourself as like this impenetrable, uncrumbleable cliff, right? And your ex is the waves just crashing up against you. And no matter what the water does, you are unconquerable, right? Which is why I said, you know, because I know cliffs can erode, right? Which is why I said that you can't crumble, you can't erode or anything like that. You're a cliff that is indestructible. And no matter how, no matter how much that water bashes against you, no matter what, you know, it doesn't matter what the kind of weather, there could be tidal waves coming towards you. You do not budge, you do not move, you do not erode, nothing happens to you. You are completely unchanging, right? You're very stoic in, in a sense, right? So applying the no contact rule is really important, obviously, as well. Now, again, if you cannot avoid your ex, if you've got kids together, you've got other entanglements, perhaps you've got a divorce settlement you need to go through with them, whatever it may be, right, if you work with them too, you know, those kinds of things. When you speak to your ex, 
in these kinds of manners, right? If because you because you can't help it, you must always speak to them in a business like manner because what's going on should be a transaction, right? If it's the kids, then you're you know you're swapping over the kids for the weekend or the week, whatever, right? Or if you know if if they're asking you about, oh, can you pick so and so up from football practice, right? It, it should be done business like, right? There should be no emotion whatsoever to these interactions, and it's the same when you go to work. Now, again, it doesn't mean that you are cold to them or mean to them um, when you're at work or anything like that. You don't want to be mopey in the corner whenever they enter the room, but you also don't want to be showing off and putting on a bravado, basically, and seeing, like, how amazing you are. You want to basically, what I always say to people is, you know, if you work with your ex, basically you want to treat them like the most neutral person you know at work. So who's that person for you? Someone who you really don't care about that much, but they're still someone that you say hi to in the morning, you know, uh, maybe have a tiny little chit chat with and that's about it. Right, so think of the most neutral person you work with who you have no feeling about whatsoever, no opinion of whatsoever, and you treat your ex like that person, right? You just, you can even put that neutral person's face onto your ex, just imagine it, right? Just visualize it, right? So you just have that feeling towards your ex whenever they're in the room, whenever you say hello to them or good morning, right? Because you may still have to do that um, in your job, right? So you kind of just always, because you, 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 like I say, you don't want to be mopey, you don't want to be acting sad or anything like that around them, trying to guilt trip them into feeling bad for you. You don't want to be doing any of that kind of stuff. Because like I said, again, that shows that you care. And remember, you've got to be that cliff, you've got to be that indestructible cliff. And no matter what kind of weather your ex throws at you, you are indestructible, okay? So another thing that can help as well is if you are in the process or you start the process of creating a life for yourself, that you're happy with, right? Because a lot of people in this world are not happy with their lives and their circumstances, and they are not, uh, but simultaneously, they're not actually trying to do anything to make it any better. So it's really important then that you try and figure out what it is that you want to achieve in this life, or what kind of lifestyle do you want to be living? Because it might not be, you might have achieved everything you already wanted to achieve. You may already have the amount of money that you want, or you may have the job that you want, but what would make your life more happy? What would make your life more enjoyable? What would bring some passion and inspiration into your life? And that could be just something as simple as you you want to start a new project. Like perhaps you've always wanted to be an artist and that's something you're really passionate about. Perhaps you're really passionate about painting or something like that. Bring some passion into your life. Find a skill or a new hobby that you can do that you really, really like, that you've always wanted to do. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to think about other things as well like about what kind of house do you want to live in, how would you ideally like to be spending your free time, what kind of friends do you want, you know, um, and think about that kind of thing and try and work towards that too. And it may be the case that you're not happy with your job as well, so of course then you want to find a new job for yourself or perhaps you want to start your own business, right, and figure out what will make you truly happy, what would make you proud of your life, right, and then you work towards that, Right, because even if you're not currently happy with your current circumstances, you can at least be happy with the path that you're on. You can at least be happy with you know the things that you're working towards. Because you, like I said, you may not be happy with your circumstances, but if you're trying to change your circumstances, especially if you're doing it in a very passionate, inspired way, you're going to be a lot more happier than the people that are not doing those things. And at least you're working towards something. And at least if you keep on trying, you're going to get there eventually. So. Trying to create a happier life for yourself will definitely make your ex regret losing you because they'll look at your life, especially when you've achieved a lot of these things, right, and be like, wow, what happened? They did a completely, you know, they, they just completely changed their life around. Um, they, they used to hate their job, they used to hate their circumstances, and now they're thriving, and they're thriving without me because I feel like a lot of exes, especially the, the people that have been, like, the dumper, you know, they think... Um, they're kind of expecting you to be miserable for a while, maybe even miserable forever, because every, because these people have like a big ego sometimes, right? A lot of people have a you know a big ego actually, and they think when they break up with someone, that person is always going to miss them. That person is always going to um, you know be moping after them and always being secretly still in love with them and wanting them back. But when they see that you're moving on with your life and you're actually doing really well, they're not they're going to be like, whoa, that's going to hurt their ego a little bit and may even get them to regret breaking up with you because they're going to be like, wow, that person is thriving without me. It seems like they're actually doing better without me than they were when they were with me and that's going to hurt their ego a little bit and it may even make them regret losing you, okay? Um, so another thing that's going to really help as well is if you learn, grow 
and evolve when it comes to understanding romantic relationships. So obviously you don't want a, re- a repeat of what's happened to you, right? If, you, if you've if you been broken up with and obviously that relationship wasn't right for whatever reason, there may be a lot of things that maybe you did wrong, that they did wrong, or perhaps you were just incompatible and perhaps you just got together with someone who wasn't right for you, whatever, right? There's a lot of things that go into it. There's a lot of things that can happen. It may have been that everything was perfect to begin with and then you just kind of grew apart. It could be a number of different things. But... If you want to find someone new eventually in the future, then you have to learn about dating and relationships. Um, You have to learn about how to communicate with the opposite sex or the same sex as the case may be. So there's a lot of things that you can do. So I highly recommend that you go and check out the books that I recommend, which are in the description of this video. There's a link in there. And you'll be able to find 10 books that I recommend people. Five of those books are dating and relationship books. And those are the books I want you to focus on, especially if your love life is a huge focus of your life right now. And once you've read those books, you'll get a more deeper understanding of the opposite sex. So, and, and even maybe of yourself, you'll get a deeper understanding of yourself so that when you go into your next relationship, it'll be a lot healthier one. And you'll know to what kind of partner that you want to look for and things like that. So you won't end up with the wrong person. And hopefully this kind of thing won't happen to you ever again, where you have a breakup, right? So I highly recommend that you go and check out those books. Um, if you do purchase any books through those links, I will get a small commission, right? With no extra charge to you. But if you don't want to do that, and then you can easily just write down the titles of the books and find cheaper versions of them online somewhere, okay? So the the option's there for you, okay? Um, but thank you very much if you do purchase a book through that, those links because that does actually really help support me, okay? So another thing that can really help, and this is like a really big one, but of course you need time before you do this, right? You don't want to do a rebound, right? But wait until you find someone better than your ex in every possible way before you settle down with someone new, right? Because what you want to do is you want to obviously find someone who won't break up with you, right? So that may mean that you want to find someone who actually loves to spend time with you. Because one of the things that I've noticed with couples that break up is that it's almost like they're always living separate lives. They, there's nothing that they like to do together as a couple, right? Um, maybe they go out on dates, like they go out to dinner and to the cinema, maybe they do that, but they have no shared interests, right? They have no things that they like to do just, you know, when they're not on a date, right, together. Like, for example, perhaps, you know, me and my wife, for example, we love to go out and we like to go hiking in the countryside, we like to go and look at different scenery and things like that that are local to us, and we love to do that kind of thing. That's something that we love to do together, and we enjoy each other's company, right? And there are so many couples that I see that break up that argue, that bicker, um, and they don't enjoy each other's company at all. And this, it's like they are living separate lives. And really, it's only a matter of time before that relationship dissolves or they just stay together and it's really miserable. And it's really sad. And it's really sad to see. So when you find someone else, what you've got to be looking for is not only someone that you're really attracted to, um, but also someone who you like to spend time with, who can make you laugh, who and you can make them laugh. And you could, you have a lot of things that you like to do together right and essentially you're joint at the hip there's you just do everything together basically of course it's still good to have some time with your friends and for her to be with her friends and have that bit of separation um but also it's really um, it's really the best thing if you can find someone who's not only your romantic lover but a good companion you know someone who can keep you company and you you can make each other laugh and you can enjoy each other's company right and when you find someone like that right when you find someone like that you're not going to worry so much about this ex, right? You may even forget about them altogether. I mean, you may not forget about them as if, you know, you get amnesia, right? You're not going to just forget about them like that. But you're no longer going to care about what they think of you and if they regret the breakup, right? If you find someone like that, okay? And you you are, you will become that cliff that is um, undestro- undestroyed by their ex, basically, right? You will become that because you won't care about what they do, right, anymore, because you'll, you'll feel neutral towards them, okay, if you find someone like them, okay, so if you do all these things, right, which I know are a lot easier said than done, definitely, <clears throat> but if you do this, it's going to really help, if, I highly recommend as well that you save this video, maybe come back to it a few more times to help you retain the information, um, so it can help 
with the process that you're going through you may want to revisit it a few times in your lifetime um but i so i hope it's really helped you and you 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 will do that so thank you so much for watching if you would like coaching with me then please go to www.christineloverage.com and i shall talk to you again very soon goodbye